The tragedy at Twin Parks left a devastating impression on the tenants, the community, the Bronx, and beyond, but also on the first responders who fought against unbearable conditions that day, trying to save lives. I sat down with those firefighters and the FDNY commissioner to reflect on the call they won't ever forget. One year after the chaos. We were dealing with so many worst case scenarios. And carnage. It looked like a battlefield. The first firefighters who pulled up to what would become New York City's deadliest fire in decades are sharing their stories. It was a fire that you probably respond to once in a career. FDNY Captain John Hunt was one of the yeah, first to find smoke spilling out of Twin Parks Northwest that Sunday morning last January. You the fast truck flies on the third floor of a 19-story MV. Arriving with the crews of Engine 48 and Ladder 56 before leading his team inside. It's like a tornado they went into. Very accurate, thick smoke that stuck right to your face piece, right to the thermal engine camera to the point where uh, I couldn't see it. Feeling their way down the third floor hallway until an open door they thought would lead to the source revealed catastrophe instead. We went in looking for the fire and we started finding what we call 1045 after 1045. We've got uh, at least six 1045s at the right now. Victims. We ended up finding a total of uh, six victims. In that apartment alone? Yes. That apartment was across the hall from the duplex where the fire started, sparked by a space heater, fueled by mattresses, and made worse because both doors didn't close. It's very rare you find two doors open on a fire floor. I mean, I'm going to say almost never. With no easy way out, firefighters hoisted five of the six out a window and down a ladder. On the ground, Battalion Chief Jeffrey Fascinelli, covering a shift for a colleague, became acting deputy chief that day. Normally when you go to a fire, you report it with your tools, hose, equipment and everything. We didn't need any of that. We needed staffing, people to do CPR, to carry people, to pull people on skids. So basically, transition from a fire operation to really a, a mass casualty incident at that point. Even when they first made the phone call about how many critically injured patients there were, I had to ask them to repeat themselves a couple of times. You just don't hear that. 64 people with serious injuries pulled from the building, half of them clinging to life. What kind of brought me back to was my sense of, of uh, Prospect Avenue in 2017. Ironically enough, that was a fifth alarm. This was a fifth alarm. And as the incident commander for both, I, I never saw a flame of fire. All I had was smoke the entire time from the front of the building. That smoke, claiming 13 lives four years prior during a fire at 2363 Prospect Avenue. It took another 17 at Twin Parks. Both times it spread because of an open door. In 2018, self-closing doors became required in New York City. On January 9th, 2022, multiple malfunctioned. And I think, you know, the most notable change is, you know, the mayor had an executive order that really helped us do a lot more um, partnering with our fellow agencies, especially HPD. And that, you know, really helps us understand where there are the most violations. To know that a building may have a particularly high number of violations is something that, you know, could help save lives. In a sit down interview, FDNY Commissioner Laura Cavanaugh tells me outreach and education changed too in the years since this tragedy. Especially in this fire, in this borough, there are a lot of immigrant communities. So we think a lot about, you know, how do we work with the clergy? How do we work with like, community partners? How do we make sure that what we know is actually getting to the people who need to know it? And then we also worked with DOE to get more of this into schools. Because knowing your home and having a plan can be life-saving as New York's bravest know firsthand. This is a building that's a great example where it's a fireproof building. You could shelter in place if you were not in the fire apartment. What they really don't take into account, like anyone, is what could happen. So, um, unfortunately, it's usually too late when they realize what could happen. You know, one year later, so many of those images are still not easy to look at and yeah. to see, remember what happened then, you know, but fire fires during this time of year, they're nothing new. Firefighters, we're seeing the frequency kind of go up, though, a little bit lately. What are firefighters kind of doing to try to bring those numbers down, Amanda? Yeah, Kurt, right now their big concern is those lithium ion batteries, right. right? Commonly associated with e-bikes and e-scooters. So looking ahead, the commissioner told me that the biggest risk is when they're charging. That's when they're seeing more and more fires being linked to those batteries. So the commissioner says that she's pushing manufacturers to adhere here to various safety standards. One example, not allowing the batteries to charge if it's an aftermarket charger.